What does it really mean to be Russian? For generations, the image of the Russian people has often been tied to a singular identity, Slavic roots, Orthodox Christianity, and centuries of shared history. But what if science tells a more complex story? What if the DNA of modern Russians reveals a much deeper and more surprising origin? Thanks to cutting-edge genetic research, scientists are uncovering that the story of Russian ancestry stretches far beyond Slavic tribes. From the windswept steppes of Central Asia to the icy forests of the north, the genetic tapestry of the Russian people weaves together threads from ancient Indo-European warriors, fino uyghur tribes, Viking settlers, Mongol invaders, and Turkic nomads. In fact, recent genome-wide studies show that the Russian population is one of the most genetically diverse in Europe and Asia. Certain regions carry traces of Scandinavian Y-DNA, while others reflect Central Asian mitochondrial lines. And in Northern Russia, Uralic and even Siberian markers appear in significant numbers, reminders of early indigenous populations that predate the Slavic expansion. This video will take you on a journey through time, migration, and mixing, guided not just by history books, but by the code written in our cells. You'll see how waves of conquest, trade, and migration shape the Russian identity, leaving behind invisible but powerful legacies. So, are Russians really just Slavs? Or is the truth far more intricate, multicultural, and unexpected? Let's dig into the surprising genetic story of one of the world's largest and most fascinating nations. To understand the genetic origins of the Russian people, we have to go back, way back, to the last ice age, when ancient human groups roamed the vast plains of Eurasia. Long before Slavs or Rus, the ancestors of modern Russians were already walking the lands that would one day be called Russia. The earliest genetic foundations of the Russian population come from three ancient Eurasian groups, Western hunter-gatherers, Eastern hunter-gatherers, and early European farmers. But there's another key player in this story, the Amnea people, steppe herders from the Pontic Caspian region who lived around 5,000 years ago. The Yamnaya were part of the Indo-European expansion, and their genetic influence is deeply embedded in the Russian gene pool. They brought with them the R1-AY DNA haplogroup, which remains one of the most common paternal lineages in Russia today. These people didn't just bring genes, they brought languages, culture, and technology that would shape much of Europe and South Asia. But the Russian landmass was also home to Uralic-speaking peoples, such as the Mansi and Kandi, who lived in the northern forests and Siberia. Genetic studies reveal strong traces of Uralic ancestry in populations across northern Russia, particularly in finno uyghur groups, and even in modern ethnic Russians from the north. Meanwhile, in the east, Siberian and Central Asian hunter-gatherers also contributed to the genetic makeup of people in the Urals and Siberian parts of Russia. Mitochondrial DNA shows connections to ancient Siberian populations, linking modern Russians to a much broader Eurasian context. In short, before the Slavs emerged as a distinct group, the land we now call Russia was already a melting pot of ancient lineages, steppe nomads, forest dwellers, and eastern wanderers all leaving their genetic footprints behind. These ancient roots laid the groundwork for the complex and diverse population that would one day become the Russian people. While much attention is often given to the Slavic and Indo-European roots of the Russian people, one of the most fascinating and underappreciated chapters in Russia's genetic history lies with the Uralic and finno uyghur peoples. Long before Slavic expansion into northern and eastern parts of Russia, these lands were home to ancient groups speaking Uralic languages. Today, their descendants include the Finns, Estonians, Karelians, Komi, Mari, Mansi, and Kanti, among others. Though many of these groups were later assimilated into the expanding Russian state, they left a lasting genetic and cultural legacy. Genetic studies show that many ethnic Russians, especially those from northern and northeastern regions, carry significant Uralic ancestry. This is reflected in both mitochondrial maternal and Y-chromosome paternal DNA, indicating deep intermixing over thousands of years. Certain haplogroups common among Uralic peoples, like N1C, are found in notable frequencies among modern Russians, particularly in the North. But it's not just about genes. Linguistic traces place names 
and even aspects of traditional Russian folklore and spiritual beliefs may have roots in Uralic traditions. Some scholars suggest that the Russian word for which Vedma and other folk concepts may have parallels in Finno-Ugric mythologies. As Slavic peoples migrated northward during the medieval period, they didn't just conquer or replace these Uralic groups, they blended with them. Over time, many Uralic communities adopted Slavic languages and Orthodox Christianity, becoming part of the broader Russian identity, but their genetic fingerprints remain. Today, the Uralic influence is an essential part of Russia's diverse human tapestry. It reminds us that Russia is not just a Slavic nation. It's also deeply connected to the ancient forest peoples who once thrived in its vast cold landscapes. The story F the Russian people cannot be told without the pivotal role of the Slavic expansion. Beginning around the 6th century CE, Slavic tribes started migrating outward from their homeland, likely located in what is now eastern Poland, west Ukraine, and Belarus. Over the next few centuries, they spread across Eastern Europe, transforming the ethnic and linguistic landscape of the region. In what would later become Russia, East Slavic tribes began settling along river systems, such as the Dnieper, Volga, and Oka. These waterways served as natural highways, allowing for migration, trade, and communication. As they moved north and east, the Slavs came into contact with a variety of other groups, Baltic tribes, finno ugric peoples, Turkic nomads, and the remnants of the Scythians and Sarmatians. Rather than merely displacing local populations, the Slavic expansion often resulted in assimilation and mixing. This blending gave rise to a new identity that combined Slavic language and culture with local genetic and cultural traits. The foundation of Kievan Rus in the 9th century marked a significant milestone. It united various Slavic and non-Slavic tribes under one political and cultural umbrella. Genetically, modern Russians bear the imprint of this process. While their language and much of their cultural heritage are Slavic, DNA evidence shows significant input from earlier populations, especially in the north and east. The Slavic expansion was not just a migration. It was a fusion that set the stage for the emergence of the Russian identity, laying the groundwork for a powerful and enduring civilization. One of the most surprising contributors to early Russian identity is a group you might not expect, the Vikings, specifically the Varangians. In the 9th century CE, Norse warriors and traders from Scandinavia began traveling eastward via river routes like the Dnieper and Volga establishing trade networks that reached deep into the Slavic world and even as far as the Byzantine Empire. These Varangians weren't just raiders. They were also skilled navigators and merchants. They played a vital role in the political development of the region. According to the Primary Chronicle, a medieval Slavic text, Slavic tribes invited a Varangian leader named Rurik to rule over them around 862 CE. He established his base in Novgorod, laying the foundation for what would become the Rurikid dynasty, which later moved its capital to Kiev, forming the powerful state known as Kievan Rus. Genetic studies of early medieval remains in western Russia and Ukraine reveal Scandinavian Y-DNA markers, confirming the presence of Norse men among Slavic populations. These Vikings didn't remain separate for long. They intermarried with local Slavic and Finnic women, gradually becoming part of the region's genetic and cultural fabric. The Varangian influence extended beyond politics. They helped establish early trade routes, shaped military organization, and even contributed Norse words to the evolving East Slavic language. Over time, they were absorbed into the broader Slavic identity, but their legacy still echoes in Russian history and genes. The Viking connection highlights the multicultural foundations of what would later become the Russian people. One of the most dramatic chapters in Russian history, and one that left a lasting genetic imprint, was the arrival of the Mongols in the 13th century. In 1237, the armies of Genghis Khan's descendants swept through the Russian principalities, establishing the Golden Horde, a powerful Mongol Khanate that ruled much of Russia for over two centuries. During this time, Mongol rulers intermarried with local elites, imposed tribute systems, and maintained political dominance. Although the Mongols did not settle in massive numbers, their genetic legacy can still be detected today, 
particularly in Y chromosome markers associated with Central Asian steppe populations. Studies show trace elements of East Asian and Mongolic ancestry in some Russian and Tatar populations, especially in the Volga and Southern Siberian regions. Even more influential were the Turkic peoples, who had long lived on the Eurasian steppe before and after the Mongol conquests. Groups like the Tatars, Bashkirs, and Chuvash interacted extensively with Slavic populations through trade, conflict, and intermarriage. Many modern Russians, especially those in the Volga-Euro region, carry Turkic genetic signatures, blending Slavic and steppe ancestry. Culturally and genetically, Turkic and Mongol influences help shape a more diverse and complex Russian identity. From language borrowings to military structure, their impact extended well beyond DNA. The Mongol and Turkic layers remind us that the Russian people emerged not from a single ethnic source, but from centuries of contact, conquest, and coexistence across the vast Eurasian frontier. With the rise of modern genetics, scientists have begun to decode the complex ancestry of Russians, and the findings are full of surprises. Studies using mitochondrial DNA tracing maternal lines and Y chromosome DNA paternal lines reveal that modern Russians are not a homogeneous group, but a genetic mosaic. While Slavic ancestry forms the dominant base, significant traces of Finno-Ugric, Turkic, Baltic, and even East Asian genetic markers appear across the population, especially in regions like the Volga-Ural, Siberia, and the Russian Far East. One surprising discovery is that many Russians have deep genetic ties to ancient steppe nomads, including the Scythians, Sarmatians, and even Yamnaya herders from the Bronze Age. These ancient peoples helped seed the Eurasian gene pool thousands of years ago, long before Russia existed. These studies challenge old notions of national identity and highlight how migration, mixing, and movement have always been part of the Russian story. The genetic revelations about Russia's past are doing more than just filling in the blanks of ancient history. They're also reshaping how people think about Russian identity today. For much of modern history, there's been a push to define Russianness in relatively narrow cultural or ethnic terms, often centered around Slavic roots and the Orthodox Christian tradition. But modern genetic studies tell a more complex and inclusive story, one where Russian identity is not tied to a single origin, but rather to layers of ancestry built over thousands of years. From the ancient Uralic-speaking hunter-gatherers to the Turkic and Mongol steppe peoples, to the Slavic settlers and Baltic neighbors, the Russian gene pool reflects centuries of movement, trade, conquest, and assimilation. These findings show that diversity is not foreign to Russia. It's foundational. This has profound implications for how Russians and the world might understand what it means to be Russian. Instead of a single ethnic narrative, Russian identity can be seen as a tapestry of cultures and histories woven together over millennia. It also helps explain why different regions of Russia vary so much in language, culture, and even physical appearance. In a time when national identity can often be weaponized or oversimplified, the genetic record serves as a reminder. Identity is dynamic, not static. The real story of Russia is not one of purity or isolation, but of connection, exchange, and complexity. As science continues to uncover the past, it also invites modern Russians to embrace a broader, richer understanding of who they are.